All right. right. You just have boys. Take one. There we go. <laughs> All right. Tonight we're going to go over the the importance of ingredients, or the question is, are ingredients actually important? That's the big question. Because you know there's so many diets, so many different teachings, so many things out there. Are ingredients important? By the way, I'm Tony. This is our third, fourth, third, third or fourth talk. Third? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Third talk, nutrition talk out of a series of six right now. Uh, so this one here, are ingredients important? We meet it halfway. There you go. <laughs> because there are so many popular teachers, so many different things being taught, and I personally hear a lot of people saying, you know, well, okay, I'm, macros have their place. The problem is a lot of the teachers I see teaching, don't worry about what's in it, just look at the macros. While the macros have their place, the ingredients matter even more than the macros. Because you can keep your calorie count or your macro count to a certain point, but if you're putting ingredients in your body that are gonna sabotage your body, what are you doing? <laughs> You're not gonna get the results that you wanna get, okay? <clears throat> All right, so we've got this print out here. This, by the way, okay, I've got it. I've got certain things highlighted, which we're gonna go over. If you look over this paper, you'll notice that there are government terms and there are government-looking statistics on here. This came straight from a government website. So you can look this up yourself online and actually see this. Everything that was printed out came straight from, I think it was the FDA website. But what I did was take the time to highlight certain things that I want to bring your attention to. <clears throat> so on this question, are ingredients important? This first page, why are food and color ingredients added to food? The first answer is to maintain or improve safety and freshness. The reason I highlighted this, one of the popular diets is, is stick with whole foods. So, you know, the logical thinking is if you're gonna do whole foods, they're gonna be fresh. But yet the first thing, and this is the FDA, so anything that gets put on the store shelf has to go through their guidelines. That's the importance of this. To maintain and improve safety and freshness. Well, if you're eating the whole food and you're expecting it to be safe and fresh, but yet it has to go through this guideline to maintain safety and freshness, in my mind I'm thinking, wouldn't that exempt the whole foods then because they're already fresh and safe? So this is what our foods have to go through. So food and color ingredients added to food. The number one thing is maintain and improve or improve safety and freshness. Now, if we skip down to number two, to improve or maintain nutritional value, vitamins and minerals and fiber are added to many foods to make up for those lacking in a person's diet, or it says, or lost in processing to enhance nutritional quality. The only reason that the nutrients would be lacking in a person's diet is if they had been processed out or if man makes his own food and they don't put the nutri nutrients in there, this should be in the food anyway. So they put the nutrients back in the food or the color or the ingredients back in the food to replace what is lacking in the person's diet. So when we eat our normal, typical standard diet, that's all this processed food and stuff, yeah, vitamins, minerals, and fiber are replaced to put back in what's lacking in the diet. Again, this is coming from the FDA. This is coming from the government. So they're admitting that yes, we take nutrients out that the body needs. And then, oh, whoops, we have to put them back in. <laughs> like the fortified cereals. And right. Uh, Anything yeah. that's fortified, it's fortified specifically because they took it out and realized there's deficiencies showing up in people. They didn't put it right back in right away. 
It took them a while to realize there's deficiencies showing up in people, there's illnesses showing up because of these deficiencies. How do we fix that? Oh, wait a minute, we need to put this nutrient back in because that'll fix this. We need to put this nutrient back in because that'll fix this. We took it out to begin with, now we gotta fortify it and put it back in. Whoops, we're not gonna say we messed up though, but guess what, it's fortified. <laughs> okay, so the third highlight, while other ingredients help maintain the taste and appeal of foods, with reduced fat content. The reason I put that there, a lot of times we're taught to look for low fat foods. I don't like that teaching because fat is the biggest contributor to taste. So when you take the fat out of the food, the taste is gone. Therefore, you don't want the food. So what do manufacturers do to replace that? They add sugar put the taste back in, they add the sugar. So, while other ingredients help maintain the taste and appeal of foods with reduced fat content, other ingredients, sugar. So skipping down to what is a food additive, in its broadest sense, a food additive is any substance added to food. In our standard, typical diet, pretty much everything we eat has food additives because they have something added to the food. And as we've discussed in previous classes here, even the whole food that we buy in the store has that stuff added in, because if you were to go in nature and pick two apples off the same branch, they're not gonna have the same nutrient profile. But we go to the store and pick up two apples off the same shelf, we expect them both to be the same. Therefore, the only way they could be is if they came from a factory farm, so man made sure that they had the nutrients in there. So in its broadest sense, a food, of that, food additive could be considered even what's in the whole foods that we eat. Legally now, any substance with the intended use of which may reasonably be expected to result directly or indirectly in becoming a component affecting the characteristics of any food. That's the real important part there. Anything they put in that they expect to affect the characteristics of the food. So again, it's of course man tampering with the food because they're putting something in that they know is gonna alter something about the food. Just like with the bad ingredients that we don't realize are in there that we once we learn, we need to take them out. They know that soybean oil does stuff to the food, but it's cheap, so they put it in there. But they know it alters the food. But that's why it's on the shelf, because it's approved. Because they know it's gonna alter the food. Now, you mentioned the xanthan gum. I highlighted there the add texture part, because as it says, it's, that particular ingredient is used in salad dressings, chocolate milk, bakery fillings, puddings, and other foods to add texture. I want to point this out because this particular ingredient is not unnatural. It's actually a natural ingredient but they put it in certain foods to add texture to that food. So if you see it on the label, that ingredient's not something to stay away from. It's actually something natural, but man realized through their lab testing and all this stuff, hmm, this, this thing here will actually add texture. We can use that to enhance something else over here. Okay, the last highlight on that page, minute amounts of packaging substances may find their way into foods during storage. That came Gross. from the government website. That came directly That's from the government website. That's why we have website. all those things that say um, processed in a place that has nuts. That yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Well, Doesn't not, mean it's in there, but it could. It could be. But even this Plastic, goes further than that. Whatever. This goes further than that because it says for the packaging substances. So the food yeah. that the package boxes and, and bags that your food is in. The packaging that your food is actually in, those substances may find their way into your food that you're eating during the time that is stored in that package. That's, that's what's the key about this. The time that that packaged food is stored in that package before you eat it, the stuff, the chemicals in that packaging could, could find its way into your food before you eat it. Just so you know. <laughs> Straight from the government website. That's a CYA. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, that gives you something appetizing to take home with you. <laughs> so this, what is a color additive? 
See, see, the deeper we get into this stuff, the more enlightening it gets. <laughs> I know what a color additive is. Go for it. When you eat orange cheese, there is a color additive to make it orange. Because it is not naturally white. orange, because it's supposed, supposed to be white. white. That is true. And it's not I necessary. Just learned that. It I is just the learned that. that an anetto or is what they call it, it's totally unnecessary. Well, just putting it there. But, and I think that the reason why I love the colors is because if it doesn't look appealing, you're not exactly. going to eat it or buy it. Because people think yeah. cheese because should be orange. Some of those vegan yes. cheeses, because I've really been eating some really good ones, well, the nut cheeses. They that goes, really that goes back to the first page where they do things to alter the look to make it more appealing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make it more appealing. And of course we want our food, I want my food to look like what's in the recipe. When I mm -hmm. make a recipe and it doesn't look like the picture, or if I open a box and take something out and it doesn't look like the front of yeah. the package, I'm a little disappointed. So a color additive by their definition, any dye, pigment, or, pigment or substance, which when added or applied, to the food, drug, or cosmetic, or to the human body, is capable of imparting color. I love how they put that in there. Any any color additive, dye, pigment, or substance, when applied to the human body, even is capable of imparting color. Here's the. I don't really want to say deceptive, but sort of. Here's the cool thing about the color additives. Mm -hmm. Technically, they are all natural. Because how they get the color additives is they will take specific bugs yes. and bugs. crush the bugs. Bugs, yes, bugs. They right. will take the bug. Red food coloring is red bugs. I yeah, they will crush the bug up yeah. into a really, really fine Powder. Powder. They use Powder. Red food. And then they use that to dye the food red. So technically, it is a natural substance. So it's I a food additive. A red leaf so so red put this food? put this picture together. Put this picture together. It's a it's a color additive, a food additive, because the man is putting it into the food. Where they got it from was a natural bug that they crushed up into a fine powder to put it into this food. So technically, this color is a natural thing. True. True. So, you know, they can put that on a box and say it's organic. They literally can. That's because it's they, a completely that's natural do. thing. That's what they say. Natural color. <laughs> they yeah, don't say yeah, exactly. Crushed bug color. Exactly. <laughs> it's a natural thing. It is technically a natural thing. You need to watch out for natural flavorings, just <laughs> so you know. Ooh, flavorings. I don't even want to think about it. Color they're in, they're in a lot of stuff. For many reasons, to offset color due to exposure to light, air, temperature extremes, moisture, or storage conditions. So the apple sits in the sun for too long and it starts changing color. And you come in and say, hmm, let's alter that. Let's put some, you know, coat a little something around the apple, a natural color around the apple to brighten it up. It's natural. A it's red wax. Natural. They put a red that. wax around it to make, or if it's a red apple, to make it look right. more appealing. And the or second, those colored mesh bags mm -hmm. make the yeah. product look better, and then you take it out of the bag, you go, That's why you're oops, supposed to oops, rinse all your yeah. fruits and vegetables in a, like a and vinegar now, mixture and stuff like to get rid of all that the stuff. The bottom part of that paragraph, color additives are now recognized as an important part of practically all processed foods we eat. Yep. Color additives are recognized as an important part of practically all processed foods we eat. And it's natural. They are natural. Certified colors are synthetically produced. So there are some, this is why I highlighted this, synthetically produced, in parentheses, or human made. Because synthetic is human made. There are nine of those in the same paragraph, nine of those colors that are approved for use in the U.S. that are human-made. Exempt from those are pigments derived from natural sources such as vegetables, minerals, or animals. Yeah. On that highlight, there it is. So exempt from, so in other words, you know, they don't have to get those certified because they're already natural. <laughs> All right, the next page. This is 
really awesome. Really awesome. Because of inherent limitations of science, the FDA can never be absolutely certain of the absence of any risk from the use of any substance. So when I hear people, when people counsel with me about nutrition, they say, you know, is this, is this FDA approved? Is this, what does the FDA say about this? Because of inherent limitations of science, the FDA can never be absolutely certain of the absence of any risk from any use of any substance. You go to a grocery store and pick something up off the shelf and the FDA has proved it. People assume it's safe because the FDA has proved it. Well, this covers the rear because they can never be absolutely certain that what you pick up off that shelf will not produce some risk to your body. So with that said, the next highlight, federal officials then monitor the extent of Americans' consumption of the new additive. So you know, they're gonna watch medical records and things like that as people are buying the products that they have approved just to make sure, hmm, is this actually gonna be safe for people? Let's check in and make sure that nobody's going to hospital over this stuff. So in a way of thinking, we're, we're still a guinea pig after they approved it. <laughs> so go back to this, are ingredients important? <laughs> More important than ever. <laughs> All right, so that covers that part, the highlighting part of this. We're 20 minutes in, so I'd like to ask if there are any questions about what we're going over. <laughs> are, are ingredients important? So every time you hear a teacher saying, well, just count the calories, or just count the macros, or don't worry about what's in it. No. Well, if you look at the FDA website, they don't come right out and say it, but even they're saying, we worry about the ingredients. Well, we know the ingredients matter. Even if they're saying it, even though they don't come out in those specific words to say it, the ingredients matter. They're watching what is put into the food. So even if the popular teacher says, no, nah, don't worry about what's in it, yeah, ingredients are the key issue. And that's why I'm always talking about, look for this ingredient, look for that ingredient. I don't care what the macros say on the nutrition label, look at the ingredient label, which we went over last time. Look at the ingredients. That's the part that actually matters. That's what's gonna tell you really what's in the product, what's in the food, and what's not. Um, it's just, that's what it comes down to. Whenever I counsel with somebody, sit down with them at a table, Go over their diet, go over their medicines, go over their supplements. That's what I'm looking for. I have people bring me in their supplements, and I don't even look at the front to see what the amount of B12 is or what the amount of protein is. I turn around and look at the back, look at the label, and see what's actually in that. And they don't understand why I do it that way. But I turn around and check it off, say, okay, that one's fine, you can keep using that one, this one over here. No, no, that one's messing you up, you need to get rid of that one. No matter what the front of it says, I flip and look for the ingredients. I break it down to that level every time I counsel somebody about nutrition. But within 72 hours of them making changes, they start feeling better. That's all it takes. 72 hours, the body changes, you start feeling different. The ingredients matter because that's what's going directly into our body. That's what our body is using to achieve health or lack of health. The ingredients matter, and the government knows this, that's why they watch every ingredient that gets put in. They have to certify every ingredient that goes in, and they have to have science that, scientists to say, well, from our testing, we don't see any issues with this ingredient, or from our testing, we do see an issue, so we can't put this in the food, because too many people have maybe gotten sick from this, so we need to keep it out of the food. Or we haven't noticed, maybe, Maybe 10% of the people got sick from this, so this will be okay for the food. That's the kind of process they go through. So ingredients are the key. They are really the key. The ingredients are what add up to the calories and to the macros. It all comes together that way. This adds up to every diet plan. Every single diet plan that we use, the people throw on the internet, comes from this. It starts with the ingredients. Everything. So to that, I would have to put a really big
Yes. Because that is the bottom line. If you want to change what your body shape is in a gym, if you want to improve your health, live your life better, this is really the bottom line. That's where it all starts from. We get that straight, the body just magically starts lining up. <laughs> I know, I just walked out of that. <laughs> I realized that as soon as I came back that far. <laughs> okay. So is this making sense? You'll have, you oh, have yeah. the handouts. So you yeah. can actually read this for yourself. That's why I wanted to highlight those things and give you the handouts. Is this making sense? Well, no, the FDA has a sort of report card that they, they, they have percentages that they can kind of be totally out. You know? Yeah. Because it would be hard to be on target mm -hmm. every time. Yeah. They have reports that they, they look at all the time. So they, that, that's they, kind of where we become their guinea pigs because as they're watching how the no, public, yes. you know, they, they take the report so far to say, okay, we will approve this one as a safe ingredient because of what we see over here. Now, that, since we've seen this, let's put this in the food. Now let's watch how the public responds to this and make sure, you know, when, when, when a company comes out with a new, new food product or a new sweetener or something, and then years later suddenly it's pulled from the shelf, yeah. It's because the FDA is watching this okay. as we're the guinea pigs. Yeah, so that's kind of every are the guinea time pigs. we try something. Right, we are the guinea pigs. So what they about come other out with something countries? New. Do what? Other countries? Do they have yes the stiff guidelines or stiff there's other countries that don't allow some of the foods that we do? Yeah, they they, oh. they operate a little bit different. There are things that, like if you go to England, there are things that they they consistently maintain a ban on. Mm -hmm. That America allows. Mm -hmm. Why is they that? they eat a lot different than what Americans do. Mm -hmm. And if you look at their health, it's the health is a lot different than Americans' health. Worse or better? Usually better. Yes, usually better. better. The standard American diet is bad. It's about the worst in the world. Mm -hmm. Isn't that sad? It is. It is. It, it is. is very sad. I mean, that is sad. Well, and what I find the saddest <laughs> is to go in the store and be all those aisles. And I don't go down, not many of them, because I mean, the, ba I I mean, the basic I'm rule is when you go in a grocery it. store, it's the perimeter yeah, that you're going to shop. I do the perimeter, and, and I have for a long time, but it's got Because it's the stuff in the middle that's all the processed stuff that we should Yeah, you know, it's standard. gotten just... Oh, it oh, is sad. The standard, I never saw that before, but yeah, the standard American <laughs> diet you go. is sad. It is. That's the truth. Well, and I think we are offered way too many things. Why are there so really. many things that are just, I mean, the aisles are just full of stuff. Not really, because if you go to other countries, okay, I have a couple of clients that just, they, they hop all over the world all the time. And I've got, I've got one client, he, he will send me pictures of even hit the food that he eats in all these different countries. And it looks delicious. And, you know, they'll come back and say, yes, this was good, or this was in. They have a lot of options, but the ingredients there are very different. They don't have all the, they don't, they don't go through all the stuff that our FDA does and allow what our FDA allows, but they still have a lot of options and they'll go and say, yeah, we've got this at this restaurant, we've got this at this restaurant. And you can go to different places and they specialize in different things and the food is delicious. It's more, it's more real ingredients. They don't tamper with it and, and flip something upside down or you know something that, that comes from nature and turn it around and break it apart, flip it up, put it back together. They don't do that like America does. But they still have a ton of options and the food tastes really good. And when you eat it, the body responds different because it's not the same thing that we're taking in. And just like uh, the French paradox, if you go to France, they eat a lot of carbs, they drink a lot of wine, and yet they look really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. They do. So yeah, the standard American diet, it's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> I mean, that is just, because you would think we would have top notch yeah. technology, everything. We, we do. We but I mean, that that is, 
number one help me. Part of the problem is that in America, we want it and we want it now. And so they made all these processed foods and in order for them to make processed foods and for them to last on the shelves and stuff like that, oh, yeah. they have to put ingredients in there that are chemicals and not natural that are the things that our bodies don't need. Yeah. So. Well, something I was just reading about bread, which I've given up the bread, except for certain bread, and, <laughs> and, and then I had to really limit. But they were saying, and I never thought about this, when bread started being processed with the big factories, the big bakeries is when bread went and that's what, we, that's what we were kind of talking about a little bit earlier. If yeah. you that's exactly your, right. If you yeah. make your own bread or can go to a bakery that still makes in small batches, you're okay. You're, you're better off. That's true. But still, the, the, the ingredient to start out with, the wheat, is not manufactured like it used to be. Right. So it's, it's not as healthy as it once was. was. So today. It's hard for me to give up. Today. We still all love bread, and I have nothing against bread. But today, the choices of bread that we have, there's only three breads that I will actively recommend. And they Dave's, Dave's, Dave's Killer, killer bread. bread. Dave's Killer Bread. Which all really of good. them are just the one that's sprouted. So I've got the sprouted one in my freezer. I have, I have not yet seen the ingredient label on Dave's Killer Bread that was bad. I haven't seen them all. Okay. okay. But Dave's Killer Bread in general, Ezekiel Bread in general, and sourdough because oh. the way sourdough is made you can get that at restaurants so if they have you know this bun this that, that bun this bun this bun whatever sourdough. if sourdough dough is on that on that choice on that like option to take the sourdough because the way sourdough is done it's a little bit different than it's all fermented. the others do what it's oh, yeah. fermented isn't fermented. It? It, yeah. it is but they also take Kind of like from a start. This is this is gonna sound gross. <laughs> it really is. It's gonna sound gross. But they actually take because of sourdough, they take some that was left over from the yeah. previous batch and use yeah. it to start the new batch. And that's not gross to me because okay. that's like the mother, the mother and the vinegar and all <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So right. they take yeah. some of that. Yeah. That that to me kind of makes sense. Yeah. So the sourdough option is a is a good option when you, especially when you're eating out and you have all these different choices but you see sourdough you know they got white they got wheat and normally in a restaurant the wheat isn't wheat so you white you got wheat you got all this stuff if you see sourdough go for that and it usually tastes better too yeah well i had narrowed my days down where i was doing the sprouted one mm -hmm. the thin slice because okay. if you got the full slice then i could only have like half a sandwich and that visual wasn't pleasing to me <laughs> so by having the thinner and it still is it because like you were getting full, full is it because you were getting full from that or no it was like if i was using the thick slice and then trying to follow a guideline that two thick thicker slices was over the top i should only have one open face you or mean as far as I calories or macros cal yeah okay. just you know so then calories i found the carbs. skinny then i found the skinny so well, see, here's the thing and then I'm that. having a hard time working back protein in my diet because I took away the dairy, which was almost all my total protein, mm -hmm. and I forget to eat the animal protein. It's there, I have it, and I got <laughs> some pork cutlets to cook, and they're in the freezer. I just feel I don't be honestly dry. recommend pork. Oh, you can get away with okay. it. Pork is the least desirable of the meats. I and see that's the one I want. See, I don't. See, I don't like beef. I my family. My family. One is number one. Then my I family like hasn't had pork. I don't think the boys ever had pork. So my family hasn't had pork in like a decade and a half. Okay. Well, see, I hadn't had meat in like twelve years when I moved here at all. Okay. But, well, I'm talking about, I, mean, I have, was having a little fish because I lived on the Gulf Coast of Texas. Different. So we had yeah. the fresh, slept, when we said slept in the water, slept in the water that day, we were eating. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I don't eat fish here because of that reason. Oh, yeah, exactly. See, so, <laughs> so, it's, so it's been very odd for me. I, at best, tuna has been the only thing I really want to eat. And that's probably not good at all. Depends that's on not what you're, a good What choice. are you putting with the tuna? <laughs> Olives. 
But uh, do you put a mayonnaise with it? No. Okay. Mayonnaise. That's why I was just curious because no. the mayonnaise is bad. No. Yeah, the, the mayonnaise. If it, depend on the oil. The, depend the, on the oil they use. Yeah. The well. Tuna, the tuna itself. Um. Man, I can't remember the, the brand now. I went through this when we were doing a lot of traveling back and forth to get reset up in St. Louis. Um, most tuna actually you do need to stay away from. A lot of it has a high mercury count, which we don't need yeah. either. There was, I will have to look back at the brands, but there was one that I found that was actually acceptable, but I'll have to look at what that is okay. again. So, so th that's, because I know when I eat that tuna, that tuna sandwich, here with, with spinach and I do olives and like chopped up red pepper. In fact, I thought about making, just blending olives to make the binder for the tuna. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, if you're just using tuna and olives and it's hard to keep it on the bread, you know, to get it eaten. <laughs> you have to eat it like over your plate. So. It makes it fun. <laughs> but it actually, that carries me on a day that I have that. Usually it's the lunch meal carries me a long time, so I know that's proof that I've got to get, I don't like eggs either. And I'm trying to get, because I was doing egg white, and then someone said, well, you're missing the whole purpose of the egg if you're just eating the egg white, so I'm like, okay. Eggs aren't a requirement. If you don't like it's them. It's just trying to get the pro some kind of protein. Right. What don't you like about eggs? Texture, flavor? Um, flavor, never, ever liked them at all, unless they were totally even My in, sister in law doesn't like eggs. You know, it's I don't just get it, it's it's okay. the taste and I think I have an after an after taste yeah, thing. I understand. So I, I remember I never liked to smell them and if somebody cooked an egg in the microwave and then I would oh. first want to use it after That's oh the worst. God. Yeah. So Well, this would be considered you know, blasphemy, but you could douse some sugar and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Put some sugar in your egg, you'll help the flavor. <laughs> Sweeten it up. <laughs> All right. Well, see, this is what I've been doing is making like a paleo type bread uh -huh. and using the egg. <laughs> it's kind of like cornbread texture, but, but, and I'm like, okay, today I have an egg because it's like <laughs> one egg per serving. It's like egg bread. Gotcha. All mm -hmm. right, so that is the extent of this week's talk. So I can turn it off? Yes. <laughs>